I'm Matt. I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be taking some of your favorite weapons to mash up into hybrids you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms Reforged. This week, we decided to tackle, if Iron Man had a sword, what would it look like? Iron Man has always been a cool character, but could you imagine what he would be like coming at you with a sword? To do this sword justice, we had to put ourselves in Tony Stark's shoes. Tony Stark would use the most advanced technology known to man, so we're going to use the most advanced technology known to us. To design our template, we're using computer-aided design, otherwise known as CAD. All right, this is our general mock-up for the Tony Stark Iron Man sword. What I'm gonna do here in AutoCAD is I'm gonna break the pieces apart so that we can CNC plasma cut them and go from there. This is my interpretation of what I think Iron Man would realistically build for himself. This is gonna be a two-handed, beefy sword that would take a exoskeleton to lift and, and wield. John uploads the template into the CNC plasma cutter in order to get the most precise cut. The advantage of using the CNC uh, is that it's going to be perfect, uh, save a lot of time on the cleanup. It just allows us to go the extra mile in a shorter period of time. We deburr the blade on the Bader sander in order to prep it for the horizontal mill. Using a 1940s horizontal mill, we mill the fuller down the center of the blade, about 60,000 steep. So now we have the uh, the fuller, which lightens the sword, cut in the blade, and we'll loosen it, clean it off, and we'll take the blade to grinding. Now we grind the edges on the blade to prep it for heat treating. Using the custom retrofit CNC bridge port, we machine in the Stark Industries logo to the blade. Using our custom-made sword furnace, we bring the sword to critical temperature and quench it in oil to harden it. Now we grind the edges on the blade. Using the CNC plasma cutter, John cuts two identical pieces to create the hilt. John test fits the guard to make sure everything fits before he does the TIG welding. We often do ornamentation using the screw press. It allows us to put down over 30 tons of pressure while still working cold with the parts. It gives us the ability to uh, get right on top of the work without burning ourselves as we go and still make very deep impressions, uh, deeper than we could do if we were hand hammering and still maintain the accuracy. Once these lines are in place, Matt will grind a lot more shape into this guard, using these lines to guide the belt where he wants the deep grinding to go. Using the plasma cutter, John cuts the overlay for the hilt. Using the treadle hammer setting on the iron kiss, Sam chisels the guard overlay. Now that we got our homemade arc reactor, it's time to design and cut the overlay. After plasma cutting, John deburs the arc reactor overlay on the sander. Using a specially designed Scotch-Brite machine, I polish out the guard. After cutting the pipe for the Iron Man handle, Sam demonstrates his spin technique to polish out the handle. A 
the South Bend lathe, I knurl the Iron Man handle for better grip. Using an old school blacksmith technique, we brass the handle. First, Ilya lays on some heat with a torch. Then I apply the brass using a wire wheel. Getting ready to TIG weld the guard overlays onto the Iron Man sword guard. Using our CNC retrofit bridge port, we engrave the pommel. We added something for the diehard fans, the inscription from Pepper's Gift. I'm checking the fit to make sure the arc reactor will sit snugly and not move around as the weapon is used. In coming up with a design for the sword, we knew we needed to match those colors, the hot rod red and the gold. Tell you what, throw a little hot rod red in there. After taping off the inner part of the arc reactor overlay, I spray the pommel with our hot rod red paint. Using some gold flake paint, Lauren coats the inside of the Stark Industries logo. Given some thought to this project, we decided that Tony Stark needed a racing stripe. And a better place on a sword than right down the center of the floor. We check the fit of all of the pieces to make sure everything is where it belongs. Now we get our first look of all of the components together in place. I'm really pleased with the way the Iron Man sword turned out. From the arc reactor, to the colors from the suit of armor, to the lethality of the blade. I can totally see Tony Stark needing the suit just to swing this massive sword. We need to know what you want to see the guys build. So tell us in the comments below what hybrid weapon you want to see created next. And to make sure you don't miss it, please hit that subscribe button.